said yeah. that Morsu's own words were triple ban me or play Malphite. And now you can't even play yeah. Malphite. And it's not going to be a triple ban. So Morsu is going to get something here that he wants. And there's a lot well, of fast bans. Okay, so it's not a triple ban, but it's still his Aurelia. It's still his Jax. And uh, they haven't banned away his Fizz, which is what they did last time. It's going to be a fast first pick of Nidalee to, uh, for the first pick of Lone on Nines. Yeah, Nidalee's still one of the queens of the jungle, still very high uh, priority. Actually saw it less so much in the EU LCS than we have in Challenger. Challenger mm. still very much so playing the Nidalee. Maybe we'll see it creep back in this week's uh, EU LCS as well once we get on to 5.6. Of course, there were uh, nerfs to Sejuani and, uh, and a couple of other little tweaks around the jungle as well. But with that Nidalee locked in, Lowland Lions, this was the champion that helped them beat Origin last week on Kyrie. It is, and gamers too respond very quickly with their Corky coming out for the AD carry. So still keeping their top lanes to the chest right now, but they also pick up the Ari for the mid lane. For Ica coming in here, so uh, they don't give too much away at this point in time. Especially with LeBlanc banned away, it's another strong mid lane champion. And mid lane had a lot of changes as well here in uh, in uh, 5.6. There were the changes to Athene's question possibly of is Ziggs coming back? I'm still hesitant to yeah. say yes to that because I haven't really seen too much since the changes. But lots happened in the mid lane. Corky still as prevalent as ever down in that bottom lane. Uh, and there's still a lot open here for the top lane, as you said. I mean, you said the Fizz is open. We've still mm -hmm. got the possibility of a Hecarim, which we yep. saw out of Fnatic and Huni in, in Europe and pretty much every team as well. There's so much still there. Yeah, there's a lot to pick from in the top lane. The question is, what do these top laners play? Because mm. we know Irelia Jax is, of course, in Morsu's champion pool, but we'll see what he brings to the table. Probably going to wait for gamers to make their first move. But Lone and Lions do lock in their AD carry as well, along with the Fresh. So they have their bot lane secured, plus potentially their jungle in mid -league. Yeah, and that, speaking of jungle, yep, that Sejuani has been locked in. So Sejuani had the slow reduction on her ultimate for if you whiff the ult, yeah. uh, and I believe it was a little bit of damage taken off yeah, uh, her W from the 30%. flail. So we'll have to see exactly how much that has affected Sejuani. Some junglers have been very vocal that it's been a heavy hit to Sejuani's early clear. So we have to see. Gilius, is he going to be still as confident on Sejuani? You have to feel like that because it was picked. Rek'Sai was available at the same time. Yeah, so we do have the flex of Morgana coming in here. Could be top, could be support, depending on where gamers to put it. This would be interesting <laughs> if it locks it in. Um, but yes, they're also hovering over the Cassiopeia. Cos Q, well, we know he plays it. Um, this could be something that goes into the mid lane. There's still plenty of, uh, of things for him to play. There's like uh, Syndra, even if he wants to go down that route, even the Xerath, and maybe the Ziggs with now the Ludens coming in with the buff to the Athenes. Not too sure, but now with the hover over Fizz, it's going to be Fizz. We said they didn't ban it out, and that's the only one that he's not going to uh, uh, have that taken away from. And this is a super high damage composition when you, when you look at things. Cassiopeia, Fizz uh, are both going to become monsters in this game if you don't shut them down. Uh, the same with Graves, he's got a lot of burst damage. Nidalee's going to have a little bit of a dip, but we saw that Kyrie was not affected by the dip by getting seven kills by about the 10 minute mark against yeah. Origin. So still, uh, Lowland Lions are going to have so much damage. Yeah, I would, I would like to remind you that this is the composition, as you mentioned, uh, Nidalee came out. Now they also have the Fresh for Hybrid. This is the composition they ran against Origin, yeah. where they just got snowballing. It's five kills plus the million kills on uh, Kyrie. <laughs> and if they can replicate that against Gamers 2, this is a great start to this best of three if they can uh, pull it off. But Gamers 2 themselves, what are they looking towards? Likely top lane here. Yes. Unless they're going to flex Morgana okay. up there. But Hecarim. Okay, Hecarim's gone all the way through the draft. We've seen him higher priority by certain teams, but Smitty J, this is, I believe, I, I'm trying to remember if we've seen him actually play Hecarim before. I will have to go back and, and check yeah, through I that. Say but no. uh, at this point, this could be another unique pick here out of Smitty J, yeah. and certainly a meta pick as well. We've seen a lot of Hecarim coming through the meta. Can be fairly good against, or is fairly good against melee matchups, so we'll have to see exactly how Morsu can fare in the Fizz Hecarim matchup. Yeah, uh, Hecarim to me just is like a Smitty J champion all over, right? Like, he mm. likes to go for the split pushes. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is how he deals with the teleport. And that's basically it, because we saw yeah. Zazas play him twice last week, uh, or the week before last week, rather, and it just failed every single time. He was actually playing into a fresh like he is now, and he just got flayed away every single time he teleported in. But as the teams load onto the Rift, get your votes in for who you think will take the win by logging onto Twitter and using the hashtags LLLWin and G2Win. And we'll be checking in with your opinion later in the match. We will. And this is 
the first time we've seen Smitty J on Hecarim here yeah. in the European Challenger Series as well. Uh, on the other side of the map, this is actually going to be the third time for Fizz for Morsu. So... Uh, We'll see how it goes. We will indeed as we get into game and onto the rift. Load Land Lions versus Gamers 2. This is the first game in our best of three here. Ladies and gentlemen, our very first semi-finals in the playoffs. And the winner of this will go to the live grand finals next week, which will be hijacking the LCS studio. And the teams will be uh, there live. So very interested to see who comes out on top here, Stress. We're taking it. It's ours. I scouted it out last week. Oh, yeah? I got found all the, the security, weakness. found nice. the weaknesses. We're taking it over. <laughs> Just yeah. don't tell them, OK? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody tell them we're coming. Well, hopefully they have the Metal Gear guards where we can just sneak past and it's just like, oh, they're streaming from our studio. Let's see what Gamers 2 are doing in the top side of the map, though. They're all congregated around there. Will they just set up this death push facility? Oh, he catches them, but he gets catched himself. That's not a word, but he is going to go back to his turret. And he does hit the, get tagged by the binding, but the rest of the team may be heading into the jungle now. Of course, they know that they've been spotted, and Lone and Lions have responded by going into the opposing jungle themselves, but they're 4v5 if they head into a confrontation. That could have gone a lot worse for uh, Visility there. That, that yeah. really could have Four. been a big play to begin. Now, Visility, uh, yes, they've seen that go down, so Visility is... Uh, should should know that's happening. And the rest of Lola Lines are around the back now. Games 2 are a little bit boxed in, but there's no way Visility can actually get to the rest of his team without crossing the ward line here for Lowland Lions. Yeah. And Gamers 2 are gonna back away. They've both got deep vision into each other's jungle. However, there isn't actually vision to spot the lane swap as such from Lowland Lions. And that may become problematic depending on exactly where G2 show themselves. Yeah, so Jeebus and Heva have gone back to base and they will be heading into the bottom lane here, so they should get the dual lanes coming out. They did see Visility actually pass through that uh, base, gate wa uh, base gate ward, so they know he's uh, heading into the bot side of the map. And uh, now they definitely know he there he's here go. and he's actually setting up the lane just in case it's the 2v1. So the problem about this, yes, he's going to set up the lane, but as it's, ooh, actually hybrid, scrap the bottom lane because Ica, this is a very there's different the type There's throw. the auto, cause Q follows up with some damage. There's the ignite as well from hybrid, so he burns out in the mid lane just to send Ica packing, and he will have to go back to base. He doesn't even bother spending the biscuits. And uh, yeah, he's going to be out of commission for a couple seconds. But now that uh, that Hybrid has realized that it's actually a one versus two right now in the bottom lane, Visility hasn't able hasn't been able to push up and get any real farm done here. He's only on the one CS to four. Now they're back to the 2v2. Should be OK, but that was a little touch and go there for Hybrid. Rome thinking it would have been a 1v1 in that bottom lane. Yeah, it's only put uh, Visility a couple CS behind, but it's not going to feel the uh, long term impact. And we have to now wonder what the impact of this, this top lane is going to be now with Smitty J and Morsu going head to head. We didn't see Smitty J start with uh, that flask on its own and then do a camp and teleport back. Mm. So this will be a straight up matchup here in the top lane. And ooh, Smitty J actually just took a turret shot. That is probably something he's going to not want to do no. for the rest of this laning phase if he wants to go up against Morsu. Because if there is one thing that Morsu can do very well, it is these 1v1 situations in the top lane. Yeah, he's going to have to get itemized first first, but yeah, once he gets there, he's uh, very difficult to deal with because there's almost no real way of dealing with him because he'll just keep jumping around with a Z and he won't be building Zonis. He'll be going for the AD for his build, most likely, with the Triforce and the Blade of the Ruin King, which is what we've been seeing Fizz do as of late. We'll see if uh, he'll be doing that, but Spinny J should be able to play around this. He's played it himself. Hybrid comes out with the Flay in the bot lane. There's the auto. There's the follow-up from Visility. That's all they want for now. Hybrid is still spotted out by that ward and Kyrie looking maybe to go from the backside and see if he can close in with this pincer movement. I've seen this kind of setup before, and this was a, pretty much what happened against Origin at about this time into the game. Kyrie one spear. Ooh, it Oof. landed. No follow-up from the hook from Hybrid, though. Uh, literally inches away from Heva. Even so, not quite the target they were looking for as Jeebus was there, one under their crosshairs. But at this point, Kyrie's put enough pressure on this bottom side of the map. You can see the pressure on the middle lane as well that Kyrie's having just throws a spear in. Uh, but it's all from that roam from Hybrid putting Cosq ahead early on. Just because they didn't really get anything from Ica, 
It did pass over the, uh, the the lane presence to this Cassiopeia, though. They chunked Ari so hard, but bottom lane, they're chunking Heva. Yeah, Hybrid just never fails to land hooks. You saw it against Miffy as well. He just could not escape them. Uh, Hybrid is continuing to put down the pressure, and it means they are slightly ahead in this lane, but nothing to write home about just yet. And Gilius, just out of range, I think, of that ward to see that they were there. And Gilius will be heading through the rest of his jungle. As you mentioned, his uh, early clear maybe not as good as it was, but he has gone for the Trailblazer, so he should be able to uh, get through his jungle just fine now. Yeah, that'll help him out. Just keep clearing through. On the other hand, Kyrie hasn't yet opted for anything. Uh, if you think back, Kyrie has been one of the players that has opted uh, for, I believe it's a, the tier build on Nidalee. We saw him rush that very, very early on. Oh, another hook lands in that bottom lane, and yes, they can't follow up, but every single time, G2 are getting pressured out. And this was the bottom lane that Vizility was on his own in as they began this game, so they really didn't pressure out Graves at all in the early game. Yeah, this is uh, also the Heaver who is continuing to not quite land his Black Shields. Uh, I don't think I've seen a single Black Shield that's gone in before the hook, and every single time Jeebus has been dragged in regardless, so he needs to be a little sharper on those as the hooks keep landing. Mid lane, as you mentioned, significant advantage now to Kazuku, 45 CS to 24 from uh, from Q in here. Neither have gone back just yet. Neither have really spent any of their potions either. So they're just mostly farming it out and Kozku's getting the better of Ica. Ica was quite vocal uh, yesterday on Twitter. There was uh, a, a series of interactions between some of the players and uh, also with regards to uh, the Challenger chat show that was posted yesterday as well. Ica taking a little bit to heart uh, some of the people's comments about Gamers2 and his strength mm -hmm. on the team. So he's really been looking to kind of raise his status within the team but he's not quite getting there with the CS difference quite yet. Kyrie actually just walks straight into the lane. Smitty J, a little bit trapped here, no flash. Yeah, nice juke from Morsu though. There's the chum the waters. Kyrie is taking wow. a bunch of damage. There's the first blood in the 1v2. It won't be the second kill for Smitty as Morsu does wipe him up. But still, they do get that one kill and the assist. So slight advantage to low land Lions, even though that was not quite how they wanted it to turn out. Man, you can't underestimate the damage that's going to come from this Hecarim though. You can see uh, he basically just turns what should have been fairly easy 2v1 two two one into a, a one for one trade overall. We'll see what he opts for now as uh, he does have a little bit of gold. Yes, he has opted for those home guard uh, level three boots here. Will he use his teleport is the question because he may very well require that now that he's got home guard, can just run out. And he's almost back in lane literally just a couple seconds ago. Home guard so, so good on Hecarim. Allows him to go for those ganks and return to lane very, very quickly. So doesn't even have to expend that vital summoner of a teleport. It also gives him quite a big burst of damage on that initial hit as well. It does. Comes in with the uh, sonic boom. Just with the E. So much damage as that translates with his passive. Something as well. Smitty J is not a fan of Robot Unicorn Attack. He's not, no. He's opted, I'm a however, bit disappointed. for the Headless Horseman instead. It's a solid play. Let's we'll see if it pans out. Morsu is continuing with his CS, and uh, he's pretty much equal with Hecarim. So the Hecarim pick against those melee top laners has not quite uh, put down the pressure that he may have wanted. He just have a large minion wave heading towards him. Gilius is going to be utilizing that minion wave to see if he can get in for a gank here. Morsu is very slippery with his E and his flash. See if he can get the kill off. As Smitty does not have his ult, but Gilius does, and his flash as well. Morsu is now feeling the attack, Gilius, well, he uses ultimate. There's the Arctic Assault. He burns the flash. Good gank. Gets the flash, yeah. Didn't even have to use his ultimate there. And we talked a little bit in Champion Select about the Sejuani changes. If you don't hit it, it's from a 90% slow down to about a 30% slow. And that is a massive difference if you don't hit that ult. But the Lantern in the bottom lane, a long trip for Kyrie. There's in a trouble. flash on the Arctic Assault. Ica from the mid lane as well with the Foxfires takes down Kyrie as he's trying to prowl through the jungle. Smitty Jen, the top lane, receives the Chum the Waters. There's a damage amp from Morsu as well. The auto attacks, uh, having to use Smitty J's ultimate to get away from that. So Morsu takes control of the lane, but he's very low. He is very low, but you can see just how much damage Morsu can do in these situations. As we said, one versus one. Smitty J a little bit feeling the pressure in the trades, but still ahead in CS. Keep in mind, until Morsu really gets his flash up, though, he 
can't really risk going aggressive oh. on Smitty when his ult is up. But now that Smitty's ult is down, Morsu may be able to just burst him. He's Guinness going for is the here 1v1. too. Can he do the damage of time? Yes, he can. Oh, Urchin strike with a Sea Stone Triton. Guinness gets a little bit juke there by Morsu. That's the Arctic Assault. Needs to no. get a range for the Frost passive and get the Permafrost down. But he can't quite connect the auto attack. Morsu is going to be juking with the Urchin strike. He has E in four seconds. He just needs to buy time. He's got the ward coming down, but Ike's come in from the mid lane. Koskyu and Hot Pursuit, though. Morsu's got the minion down. He has the passive to try and reduce some of that. He's got the Urchin Strike down. Cos-Q was uh, on the on the hunt, but he was not in range to get taken out by Iker, and that's Lola Lines taking the dragon as well. Great individual play out of Morsu. Knew exactly the path thing he had to take to kind of juke Gilius out there. And if nothing else, wasted the time from the rest of gamers too, so they can take a dragon. Uh, Lola Lines now ahead, both in gold and in the dragons. That was a really good play. Yeah, you can uh, just see that Iker all the way through that was like, I wish I had bought boots, <laughs> because that would have been enough to catch up. He, uh, in fact, opted towards the Ruby Crystal instead for the extra tanky stat. Either way, that is Morsu getting away scot-free. He uh, is still heading towards his Trinity Force. He's now picked up the Thage on top of his Sheen. And now Kyra with a nice rotation to the bot lane will be able to secure the first tower of the game for Lowland Lions. And Lowland Lions, one of the things that uh, they actually do really well is their coordination between their players. When it comes to playing a split push game, when it comes to playing uh, an objective game, they're actually one of the best teams that we have here in European Challenger. And that really just shows uh, in its stats. They have the, the most dragons and barons out of all teams in the European Challenger series. So uh, that's the first objective like that in the books with the dragon and the tower. Very impressive stat there, but Morsu, that's not your lane. He's now in mid lane and they've performed the swap up, cause Q now in the top lane, but he'll be heading into the river maybe for the crab it looks like. Aika is still following through with the damage, but he's still behind his mid laner. Heva takes a javelin to the face. Morsu does not choose to follow up as Aika is also there. Second spear almost landing. And Gilius is also around that area, maybe looking to set up for a potential uh, something. <laughs> There's no dragon there, well, so... Well, this is an interesting little swap here from uh, Cos Q and Morsu. When you look at it, uh, Morsu was actually doing well in the trades, but was losing out in CS in the middle lane, whereas it's the opposite for, uh, for the middle lane, where Cos Q is way ahead in CS, uh, but there's a lot of people in mid lane, so Koski just kind of wants to farm his way up, get himself, get his tier stacked, get later into the game to get the damage, but it's kind of just releasing a fair amount of the pressure here that is on Ica, and I wonder whether that could potentially come back to be a little bit of a misplay out of Lowland Lions. They need to maybe force things in this top lane fairly soon, but it's bottom lane. You know, Binding has landed for Gamers 2. That's going to spell the end of any kind of engages here from Lowland Lions. So it's past uh, 10 minutes now, but it's still worth mentioning that Lowland Lions uh, are always behind in their CS, or they're on average they are behind in CS at 10 minutes, whereas Gamers 2 are always ahead. Uh, that is not the case this game, as Cos Q is ahead in his mid lane. Ults available. Smitty J in top Ooh, lane. Nice it. Duke over the back of the snake, but he's still chasing him down. Maybe for the kill on Slaughter Shadows. He'll flash away. He'll burn the summoner. Kyrie comes out with a takedown pounce and gets the kill. That was a little too close for comfort, as uh, Cos Q has to burn both of his summoners. Yeah, Cos Q really shouldn't have even had to use either of his summoners in that kind of situation. So, little bit of a, a misplay by Cos Q, but Smitty J keeping themselves in it. However, it's bottom lane. Gilius is just going to show himself straight away. Ultimate is available. Minion wave pushing in. Nice ult lands right onto Vazilati. Oh, the Lantern with the flash as well. There comes the flay just in case he followed up. Hybrid, what a play. Great Lantern out there. And Gilius used his ult early on that engage. Hook Ooh. has landed onto Gilius. There's no real follow-up damage, but this is just to stop them from putting any damage down onto this turret. But a new wave will refresh the minions, and this turret doesn't look like it's going to be sticking around for too much longer. Yeah, there's the binding, doesn't land on vis uh, onto Visility, trying to clear out these minions. They have indeed done so, so pretty much wasted a lot of Gilius's time down there. Very nicely played by the bot lane duo of Lowland Lions. Let's take a look at some of the items, though. 13 minutes into this game, Morsu has completed his Triforce as his first item. And on the opposing side, Smitty J also apparently looking towards his Triforce with the Phage and the Amp Tome towards the Sheen. Has, of course, gotten those home guards, as we mentioned earlier. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Cos Q, you can see him taking blue buff, but he's got the Archangel staff, so he's gone for the tier and actually didn't go tier into Ludens, he just went straight for the Archangels. Yes, he has gone straight for 
uh, that Archangel skin. He needs to ramp it up as fast as he can. He's only at about 300 stacks so far, which, you know, with that Archangel's complete, it's going to stack faster, so it should be just about on time. But it's the massive CS difference that Carl's Q is really concerned about right now, and he is way ahead of Ica from that middle lane. He's prevented Ica from really roaming at all, and every time that Ica has tried, it's been Carl's Q there behind him. However, why roam when you might be able to catch somebody coming straight past oh, your lane? He whiffs the binds as he's walking in a, front line, a straight line, but it doesn't seem to matter because Ica still follows up with his full combo. Will burn the ignite as well. That should have been a little smoother from Ica there, but they burn both of the... Uh, in fact, they burn two summoners in the form of Flash and then the Ignite from Ica. And both uh, both teams may be looking a little bit unsettled to begin this one. A couple of plays that really should be a lot cleaner are very messy right now yeah, with uh, Bindings missing, uh, you know, the, the top lane ult as well. So it is first game of a best of three series. We'll see if any of the uh, the teams really start to find their groove a little bit better. But now two pushing in this middle lane. Hybrid is there and he's got visibility as well. So it's going to be able to clear the wave out as well. Gilius chose himself, hooks on the minion. Yeah, and would have been onto Gillis had that minion just happened not to be there. Morsu and Kyrie in the top lane still pushing away, so they, they get their second turret and defend the middle turret as well. So Lowland Lion's really commanding on the objective game so far. Jeebus should be able to get the first tower of the game for games two in the bot lane. There we go. But um, when you're a team and you start making mistakes against Lowland Lions, they will capitalize. We've seen that multiple times where people make one small mistake and Lowland Lions, they always capitalize on it. And Smitty this is J. a split push game as well. Kyrie's getting forced back, but Morsu's free to just sit under this turret for a little bit longer. Smitty oh, that's J. a big crit as well. There comes the E, flattens him down. Goodbye, Hecarim. Gilis now comes into the top lane. He's one on two. There's the ultimate onto Kyrie, and Morsu just kind of leaves him out to dry. He's getting the as Kyrie tries to get away here, Morsu just finishes off the turret. He'll easily take that kill for a turret any day of the week. And Lowland Lions continue to pull ahead. Really well balanced there by Lowland Lions. They knew that they had the damage to kill Smitty J, uh, and knew that Gilius had to pick one target. They get a turret from it. This split push game is really difficult to deal with how coordinated the Lowland Lions are. And Morsu is already pretty huge. 3 0 and 0 in this game so far. Well, we were definitely interested in how the top laners would interact because they are the focal points of the teams. But uh, so far, it seems like Morsi was pulling ahead 1 and 4 on Smitty J. And gamers, too, go for a very nice dragon. Yeah, it's very important for them to take this dragon now because uh, Jeebus has to back to get his Trinity Force. That's what the bottom lane turret gave him the gold for. So they had to get the dragon and then recall rather than, you know, wait for the dragon uh, because they wouldn't have had the power spike to fight a full team fight against Lowland Lions. And Kyrie just died in the top lane. So good timing out of gamers, too, knowing what they had to do. But now that they've got it back, Lowland Lions, again, they're all together as a unit looking to push down turrets. Morsu has a fair amount of damage now. Look how fast that tower is dying at only 17 minutes into the game. Yeah, counterplay on counterplay. Heva does get hooked in. There's the black shield, but he just gets wow. destroyed what? by Morsu. I thought. Oh, that damage from Urchin Strike. I legitimately thought he'd flash to the side. Yeah. And uh, he was just off the screen. Yeah. I legitimately was like, well, there was no animation on that flash. No, he just got destroyed. Straight Man. up. 100 to 0. Yeah, the Sheen, the uh, Seasone Trident from W, and then the Urchin Strike. Crazy. Literally 60% of you have lane. This is r just so good out of Lowland Lions with how they're pushing. G2 just cannot settle themselves against this amount of pressure across the map. They let Morsu have a, a, a champion that he is very comfortable on. This is his third game here in Challenger Series on the Fizz, and it's been banned in most of the other ones. It's very strange that G2 had let Morsu get the champion like this. Yeah, you really have to question whether that long ban was worth it from Gamers 2 against CosQ, uh, because the only ban that they let through was the Fizz, which they banned out last time they played them. Also, LeBlanc isn't quite as tough to play against as she used to be. Still very strong. Uh, she did have slight changes. Slight, slight on her AP ratios on her mimicked abilities. Uh, so it's not taking her out of the top tier. Mm. It just makes it a little bit less deadly. Yeah, for context, it's 0 0.005 yeah. of uh, <laughs> all her ratios. So it's a exactly. little bit, but it's uh, it's definitely a little bit all the same. And an opponent of LeBlanc will take everything they can get from being detonated. But Heva now back from the graveyard is looking to ward up. I haven't really been paying too much attention to the Vision game because it's all been about the kills and objectives so far. But now the teams are starting to ward up as they can. And it's interesting that you bring up the Vision game actually in this oh, matchup. Really uh, because Lowland Lions have statistically the worst warding 
in the European Challenger Series. They only place a uh, award just over every two minutes on average. And then you look at, at G2, they are tied second for the worst warding <laughs> as well. Uh, they're actually tied with Maus, who, as most people know, and well, didn't have a win for four weeks. So both of these teams, if you look at one area that they could really look to improve on, warding would certainly be it. But when you're ahead right now, as Lowland Lions are right now, they're not all that focused on their warding mm. game. They're focused on let's get towers, let's get objectives, and stay ahead. Because if we're, st if we're stood right in front of their turrets taking them, <laughs> It doesn't matter if we you know can exactly see me. What yeah. They are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But still, it's some interesting stats of this matchup. Yeah, um, for sure. But now we've kind of hit more of a low period the teams are looking toward. But it's definitely like they can't seem to multitask in that sense. It's like, we'll, we'll push up your towers, but we won't also keep up our vision game by doing so. Now, he's over the wall. He does have flash if he can go for that uh, flash soul shackle engage. But Morsu is pretty much by himself right now with Hybrid and Kyrie coming up the rear. And one thing that I think actually may lead to the warding uh, is look at how empty jungle, mid, and an AD carry out of wards for both teams right now. Mm. Mainly sweepers, a blue trinket, but no purchased wards, no consumables in their inventory. Now, that either tells you that their back timing has just been perfect from all three players and they didn't have any money at all, hit it on zero and quit it or they just didn't pick any up. So that's one of the interesting things I want to keep a track of, at least mentally to myself, for the rest of this matchup. But I have to get my next damage spike. <laughs> I, can't, exactly, I can't put it on boards. That's 75 gold. <laughs> um, <laughs> He'll put me behind, uh, but wow, that's an interesting fan vote coming in here. 76% over to gamers too. And that would be the quote unquote safe bet because an on-form game is two, yes, is very good and have proven so during the previous weeks, but we've also seen how good Lowland Lions are at upsetting teams and capitalizing on mistakes like they are in this game, even though we've kind of hit more of a slow point, which I feel is going to ramp up in the next couple seconds. Yeah, it certainly is going to ramp up as Lowland Lions push up. Although a missed hook. Ooh, Gideas oh, Gideas flashes in. He comes in. There's the ultimate coming across. Heaver does land his binding, but a great ultimate by Coscube lands onto two. There's collateral damage. More suit follows up as well. Smitty J only now uses ultimate onto the back line and will take down the counterpart of Morsu, but that's four of the players from Gamers 2 down for the count. Spear comes across, does not quite land on to Ica, but it's one versus four here, and a minion wave is flooding in. Great ultimate out of Koscu to hold that fight, and Lowland Lions are going to get turrets from it as well, but you could see how much Big engaged Smitty J had and Gilius. They locked down a good two uh, two or three people with each engage, but they just didn't have the damage to follow it after they'd used everything on Morsu. Morsu burned down early in that fight, leads them now to be in the position to take a, a Baron. Ica does not have his ultimate. He has flash and doesn't have ignite. We'll see how this one goes. Everyone is very low from low line lines. If he did have ultimate, this would be a quadra, but can he do anything more? There's the teleport coming in from Morsu, and that's enough to dissuade Ike from trying anything. Just tries to go for the steal, but Kyrie was able to take that down with his smite. Let's see the last fight once again. Yeah, we will. Here's the engage out of Gilius. You see it locks down uh, two people, but it's Hybrid and Kyrie. That, you know, they're not dealing the most amount of damage right now. Morsu exhausted almost instantly, and then gets shredded down. Ike burns every everything to try and get him and really not everything hit there either and Koscu flashes picks up his kill Smitty J will be next to fall as well but you can see just how much was burned trying to get Morsu down uh, and really just that was the end of that team fight as soon as he fell well following the Baron it is now time for Dragon and this will be their second Dragon of the game for Lowland Lions coming in here that will be easily going over them there's nothing Gilius can do about it and we haven't really seen a fight uh, where gamers too have initiated with a Hecarim and using what Hecarim is there for. Uh, it's only been Lone Online's initiating onto gamers too. So I'd be interested in seeing a team fight where that was the scenario, but they need to not fall too far behind before that happens. Smitty J will get himself a top turret here, but is the rest of his team kind of uh, out in the open because he doesn't have his teleport to get involved. In theory, though, uh, Gamers 2 should have been at their power spike a little while ago off that Trinity Force uh, from both their top and AD carry players. And they really didn't utilize it very well. They, they didn't reach that point and say, OK, now we have to fight uh, because there was really nothing to fight over. Lowland Lions were already had already pushed that mid outer. Dragon wasn't available. Uh, and then they take a team fight in which they use everything and get not a lot from it. And, Lowland Lions will be happy with that because they've just hit another big power spike as well. You look at it, 
Uh, now we've got a needlessly large rod and two items onto the Cassiopeia. Static Shiv has been completed onto Graves for that extra attack speed as well. And a Blade of the Ruin King onto Fizz is a lot of items here that gives Lowdown Lines a lot of power and gives that man, Morsu, all the potential to split push here. Well, here's the 4 1, and Lone on Lines, they just need to take it slow in the bot lane, but 4v4 is not a game as two who like their chances, so Lone on Lines take away the last inner turret here, and Morsu will be just harassing down Smitty J. That's a nice bit of return damage, but it's Morsu with the lifesteal. One thing that Smitty J will have for gamers two is teleport advantage uh, in about 30 seconds to a minute. They'll have uh, a good minute window where they'll have teleport available, and Morsu won't, but the problem is if you teleport out of that lane fizz will take your tower yeah. and potentially kill you while your teleport is channeling if his ultimate is up you can also stop it as well so it's all on smitty j to be smart with his teleport if he does choose to use it in that small window he really has to make it count that's for sure yeah. um because more so regardless of the scenario regardless of the outcome will take away your base Smitty J heading back into the top lane here. Of course, the perfect guy, uh, scenario would be for him to be in base against the home guard as well, but can't really afford that luxury when Morsu's banging on the front door in the top lane. Coz-Q, I'm going to be securing these crabs. And you were talking about the items of be uh, item builds before, but Coz-Q has opted towards the Rylai's Crystal Scepter um, over what we've been seeing typically and has now gone for a easily large rod. So perhaps looking for a death cap. Uh, of course, that was one of the changes in 5.6 where now uh, death cap and her passive uh, stack additively rather than multiplicatively. So he actually loses around 12% damage when you get to the late game. That's difficult to say. Multiplicatively. Yes. I can't say that. That's I wouldn't have even tried if I hadn't <laughs> tried that. I went all in. <laughs> hey, hey, you got it. It also changes a long, long time ago as well to the Raleigh's Crystal Scepter uh, that it meant it now applies on uh, Twin Fang, I believe it was, or the Q it was, I believe. The long, long Not change ago. Blast. Yes, exactly. But uh, changes that have allowed Cassiopeia to bring that. Interestingly, as you mentioned earlier, I wonder whether this is going to be a Luden's Echo or whether it mm. will be the Rabadons, because that's the other option that we've seen uh, a couple of players. It is the Rabadons completed, so not opting for that heavy wave clear build with the Luden's Echo that we saw a couple of times in the EU LCS. So differences here between challenger players' mentality and, of course, with the patch changes on 5.6. Yeah. Um, also with the Rylai's, like, once you start twin fanging someone, they're never going to get away yeah. because it's single target slow versus the AoE, which is even more in Rylai's, so they're pretty dead. Uh, Gilius as well, he'll be melted by that build. I'm taking a look at uh, Vizility for an interesting pickup. He's gone for his two item or two damage items for first and he's now gone straight into a Quicksilver Sash. Yeah, that's a, a fairly early Quicksilver Sash when you yeah. look at things. Uh, that's the kind of timing you'd expect to see a Quicksilver Sash against a Zed. Uh, no Zed in this game. This is purely uh, to QSS off a lot of the crowd control that gamers do have because he knows he doesn't need a Last Whisper right this second. Uh, and it's just important for him to stay alive in these fights. So very mm. smart itemization. Hook is landed on Heaver into the shield. Well, see if it helps him this time around. He's going to wait for the stun to go down. Oh, he can wow. just kill Morgana instead. Gilius now comes in with his big ultimate onto two. Ikra's now turned up in the fight. Hybrid should be falling. He finally goes down as Smitty takes him out with the Rampage and the E. But Kyra is there to take him out. There's the ultimate finally. But a triple kill for Vazility. That was definitely a value pickup and he didn't even need to use it. Morsu now onto Ica lands the ultimate as well. There is the Five for one, eight from Lowland Lions, all in a blink of an eye. They just turn it on gamers too. And this looks like it might be the game. It is going to be the game at this point. Still a good 20 seconds on most people. Lowland Lions, we said their comp had damage, but they just destroyed gamers too. Wow, Lowland Lions in this first semi-finals in the playoffs go one and zero in this best of three against gamers too. Gamers 2 are not looking good for the rest of the series, Stress. Wow. I mean, Gamers 2 weren't expecting that damage. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that damage. The only team, the only people that were expecting that team fight to go quite that heavily in their favor was Lowland Lions. Yeah. Morsu teleports in, completely just blows everybody up. Uh, and, you know, that... Uh, on the side of Vizility, he's had a fairly quiet round robin. That team fight shows up huge as well. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of quiet for like five minutes where it's just like, okay, let's just clear out the waves, let's stay in our base, and yeah. oh, we're dead. And oh, the game's, the game's done. Yeah, the game <laughs> was done. Yeah. That's it. Very impressive from and the land lines. That all came from Heva and Jeebus trying to catch out Lowland Lions yeah. in their own yeah. jungle. You have to think, did the warding play a factor into that? Did they know there were that many people there? Yeah. I mean, that happened so fast. 
I, I'm trying to kind <laughs> yeah, of like keep yeah. it in my mind's eye on, on exactly how the game state was at that point. I know that Morsu was pushing in the bottom lane. Both top laners teleport in and one it does It just all lot. happened so fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty much the bottom line of that one stress. Yeah, very well played. But that's the first game and that means that Lowland Lions is one game away from going into the playoff finals. And once you're into the finals, uh, even if you lose, you still have a chance at promoting into the LCS by taking on one of the LCS teams. Or if you win, uh, which will be a very tall task depending on who qualifies from tomorrow, you will just automatically promote into the LCS. You're in the LCS. Yeah. It's, it's a short I mean, road. It's as simple as that. It is a short yeah. road. It's, uh, you know, it's the shortest road there really uh, has been outside of the expansion, expansion tournament yeah. when you look at it. As soon as you're in Challenger, it is such a good spot. To, uh, to to climb your way up to the LCS. But, you know, it's not there yet. Yeah, they can let's, see it in the horizon. Let's not run before that we can walk mm. because Gamers 2 are a team that are, should be competing more than what we just saw. Especially now they brought on uh, Soldra, who I believe was the gravity analyst uh, who left the team a couple of weeks yep. back. They brought him in, uh, or they brought Soldra in, and what what can they do? What can they do now with an analyst? What can they do between games one and two? You have to think it's ban for his. Yeah, yeah. I think that might be a triple ban coming out. Um, yeah, because that was literally the only champion that they didn't ban out from the top lane, and they just tried to edge a LeBlanc ban in there. But <laughs> even so, it, it it didn't go down well. And if they were looking for instant results with their uh, with Soldier, uh, apparently it hasn't quite turned up just yet. Hasn't yet. There's still time. There's still it's, time. It's not. It's not the end of the world. But it's minutes versus days, which they had before. Yeah, e exactly. And you look at this game now. Uh, gamers two are on the blue side in this next game, which means Morsu, should he choose to take it, has the counter pick for top lane, regardless of what you ban. Mm. So if he's got something in, up his sleeve, which Morsu normally does, he's played Wukong and Fiora, Fiora. Yep. so he's probably got something as a counter pick. That puts Gamers 2 in a very tough position. They have to rely on a solid strategy. They can't rely on outplaying now. Yes, very, very true. Uh, I'm quite interested in uh, what they're going to do for their pick and ban strategy, yep. but we'll find out uh, when we head into that second game. So we have to take a quick 3.30 break, but when we get back, Lowland Lions and Gamers 2 take to the rift for round two. We'll be right back. <laughs> 